Buddy, they are definitely, I think, two of the cutest dogs in the world. We're chilling out with some of Bob's and Bella's friends this morning. Always nice to learn a little bit more about a brand new breed. And this morning we have Pat Wilhelm with us. She is a Cavalier King Charles breeder. So she's got uh, her beautiful two dogs with us just to learn more about this very interesting and almost royal breed. Pat, good morning. Welcome to Expresso. Good morning, Ewan. Thank you so much thank for coming you. in. I know it's, it's, you know, getting your babies up so early in the morning could be a mission, <laughs> but thank you for coming in. Thank so, you. So, so please introduce us to who we, who we have here. Well, this is Rachel, my King Charles Spaniel. This is Holly. She's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. They're both about 15 months old. So both about 15 months old. Now, there's a noticeable difference between the two. But yes. first, let's, let's, just little, let's go a little bit back in history. What is the story behind the Cavalier King Charles? Well, they are originally under one umbrella called a toy spaniel. Okay. Um, this, they originally, they were the longer nosed spaniels in the courts of Europe. Yes. Um, they, and in the 1500s, the nobility had them as sort of little lap dogs. Oh. They used them as little bed warmers. And in fact, the ladies under their long skirts used to have them sleeping on their feet to keep their feet warm and also to take the fleas away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there were ultimately bred to be companions, to yes, be very they close are, to they their are, owners. They were then called companion spaniels. Okay, yes, yes. all right. So they form part of the toy breed because I know yes, there's a, 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 you know, a wide variety of spaniels out there. Yes. And then there's, as I said, a notable difference between the Cavalier King Charles and the King Charles, yes. which is this little beauty over here. Yes. What is the main difference and why? Why is there that difference? Well, in the 1600s, the end of the 1600s, William and Mary came to the throne of England. And they, they, they brought pugs with them who actually mixed with the Cavaliers and oh. we got the, the shorter nosed version of the King Charles Spaniel uh, that wow. we still know to this day. And the Cavaliers became a little bit sort of um, <laughs> extinct and they were brought back in the early 1920s um, as a breed. Wow. People started to breed them for the longer nosed Spaniels and then the, they were recognized by the Kennel Club of London in 1945 as a registered breed known as the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel to distinguish them from the flat-nosed yes. King Charles Spaniel. And they are not common at all here in South Africa? Not in this country. Um, uh, there's two in this country, both little... Two only? Yes, two in this country, both uh, black and tan girls. So how did you get hold of, of this little one? Well, I went over to England and I met several breeders and I had to wait, I put my name down <laughs> on the list yeah. and had to wait about two oh. years before I got Rachel. Oh my but, word. Um, Rachel is um, a very, you, you can see that the King Charles Spaniel is a smaller version of yes. the Cavalier. Um, they've got a much flatter face, that's where the pug comes in. They've got a more domed head and their ears are lower set. Yes. And they're much, they're much smaller. Um, the King Charles has the, the Cavalier King Charles rather, has <laughs> the, the flat face head. is too cute. And a much sort of rounder, big, big round brown eyes, that's part of the breed. Um, <laughs> and how can you say high, no to those big brown eyes? I know. <laughs> and they're more lively than, the, um, than yeah. the King Charles. They're more easy to train as well than the King Charles. The King Charles can be a little bit stubborn. Yeah. And they, these are more sort of lap dogs, and these are, they can yeah. be what you call a sporting spaniel. But you can really see that they are companions. They love their owner. Oh. As you say, they're bred to sit on your lap, just That's be close to you yes. at all times. Yeah. And I'm sure there must be some very interesting stories, you know, when you look into the history of these dogs. I know that you were telling me a little bit earlier about yes. just how big a companions these dogs are. Yes, yes. And we were saying that um, Mary, Queen of Scots, when she was beheaded, um, after, the, after she died, they moved the body and they found a little toy spaniel still oh, hiding no. underneath her skirt. So, oh, it just goes yes. to show the commitment that these dogs have to their owners. Yes, they, love, they, just, they just love to be with yeah. people. They're not really for families who are at work all day. They, yeah. they really pine for their owners. Yes. You, need, you need to be there to look after them. You need to be them, there with them all groom the time. Them, they brush they them. need to be with you, put it that way. <laughs> they just need to be loved. You can just see looking deep into your eyes. Pat, thank you so much for coming through with Rachel and Holly. Oh, such a treat just meeting these two. Aren't they just too adorable? If you would like to find out more a little bit about the King Charles Cav or the, the Cavalier King Charles and the King Charles Bead, you can just log on to our website, expressoshow.com. We'll put your info on there. But aren't they just adorable? We'll see you guys after this. He just keeps going. That's the strength you get from Bubtail. Bubtail, SA's most loved dog food for strong South African dogs.